hi. Uh, I was just, you know, scaling the Mount Everest. <laughs> I do that every now and then in my dreams, of course. <laughs> hi, welcome back to the 5W series. My name is Atul and today's episode is on dreams. Yes, what wonderful things, right? Dreams. We all have all kinds of dreams. The good ones, the bad ones, the thrilling ones, the scary ones, the romantic ones. Adventure-filled dreams and action-filled dreams. Dreams! So let's find out more about the dreams. You know, we have about three to seven dreams a night, which means that human beings can dream for about two, three hours a night. That is in one sleep spell. And that means that on an average, we dream for about six years in our entire lives. And that is apart from the immense day dreaming that we already do, sitting in coffee shops and our offices and our college and schools, looking out of the window and thinking about stuff that we want to do. <laughs> and we forget. We forget our dreams, the dreams that we dream at night. 95% of our dreams are forgotten within 10 minutes of waking up. So the question is, why do we dream and what purpose do they serve? It is a question that has intrigued people from all walks of life, from the beginning of mankind, a scientist, a sage and a common man. You know, people from the early civilizations believed that dreams are a medium between the earthly world, this world of ours, and the so-called world of Bowers, which is the godly world. The Greeks and the Romans actually thought that dreams have prophetic powers. Dreams and their interpretations have been a subject of scientific speculation and also subjects of philosophical and religious interests throughout history. By the way, the scientific study of dreams is called oneirology. O-N-E-I-R-O-L-O-G-Y. Oneirology. And the scientists who've done extended research in dreams can clearly be divided into two schools of thoughts. The first school of thought, which is the physiological school of thought, is based on the idea that we dream to exercise certain neural connections in the brain and those connections affect certain attributes of human learning, which means the brain is continuously at work even while we are asleep. No rest for the poor brain. Damn. The psychological or the second school of thought is based on the idea that we dream to sort our problems out and focus on the events of the day or things that require a lot of our attention. And that is how they believe Ke Kule solved the benzene structure. Next time you face a big challenge or a puzzle in life, you know what you have to do now. You just have to sleep over it because then you'll have a better chance at cracking it. <laughs> And then there are some researchers and scientists across the world who believe that dreams are a combination of both the theories, the first school of thought and the second, the physiological and the psychological factors. So now let's actually figure why dreams occur. Have you ever heard of the REM stage of sleep? If you have, then hats off to your general knowledge. But for those who haven't, the REM stage of sleep is the rapid eye movement stage of sleep in which the brain activity is very high. In fact, in that stage, the activity of the brain is so high that it resembles that of us being awake. And it is in that stage that we actually dream. So in the REM stage of sleep, a lot of physiological changes occur in our body. For starters, our breathing goes up, our heart rate goes up, and then obviously our blood pressure goes up as well. And we can never ever regulate our body temperature in this stage of sleep. In this stage of sleep, the rest of our body is essentially paralyzed until we leave this stage of sleep, which is the REM stage. The paralysis is caused by the release of glycine, an amino acid. It paralyzes our body because the REM stage is the stage in which most dreaming takes place. So this could be nature's way of making sure that we don't act out of our dreams. Otherwise, if you're laying down next to somebody who's dreaming of playing football, you will constantly get kicked throughout the night, wouldn't you? In some cases, when the glycine released is not in appropriate quantities, you will see people acting out of their dreams partially and screaming and shouting expressions or emotions from their dreams. So dreams are merely electrical brain impulses in which the unconscious mind pulls random thoughts and memories from our day or our past, where the mind can get busy organizing and stacking the stuff that we need for the future and getting rid of the junk that we don't actually need. So it's like a flush system. And then the conscious mind makes a cohesive story out of the electrical brain impulses and that is a dream. So this explains why our dreams are so fantastic and out of this world and they seem so unreal. It's because they are not supposed to make sense. They are not a message sent by the brain. It's just the conscious mind 
trying to synthesize all the noise that is coming from the unconscious brain. Though the theories we discussed above are very popular, they do not enjoy the consensus. They merely scratch the surface. Quite honestly, dreams are still a mystery and nobody has ever cracked them completely yet. Which means you still have a chance at coming up with a new theory about dreams. Which means all you have to do is just go to sleep and keep dreaming and maybe you will find the answer in your dreams only about why we dream. <laughs> so friends, I hope you enjoyed this episode about dreams. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like it, please share it with your friends and do not forget to leave your comment in the comment section if you ever figure out why we dream. Thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank <laughs> you.